On December 27th, 1958, with luggage, instruments, and uniforms carefully put on board, along with a large chunk of Mississippi River ice, nearly 200 student musicians from the State University of Iowa boarded a special 18-car Santa Fe train as Herky the Hawk, animated symbol of the Iowa Hawkeyes, gave the signal to start westward on a once-in-a-lifetime trip. These young musicians were members of the State University of Iowa Marching Band and Scottish Highlanders, and their destination was California, where, through the courtesy of the Santa, they were to participate for the second time in three years in the Tournament of Roses. They quickly made themselves at home aboard their special train, particularly in the dining cars, where they stored up energy for the first of several performances, which they were due to make en route. A short that it was time to debark in Kansas City for their first concert and parade. As much at home on a highly finished floor as on a football field, the Iowa musicians put on a performance which will be long remembered by travelers who chanced to be in Kansas City's Union Depot that day. Their indoor program was followed by a parade where these two precision marching and playing units performed for crowds of after Christmas shoppers who lined the streets. Leading the parade was Herky the Hawk, mascot for all the university's athletic and other activities, followed by the 135-man State University of Iowa marching band. Then came the Scottish Highlanders, 75 kilted co-eds internationally recognized as the largest and most unusual bagpipe band in the world. Formed as an all-male military unit in 1935, the organization was taken over by the co-eds in 1943, when World War II depleted the university's supply of men. Travel time for Iowa's modern minstrels. Next stop, Albuquerque. By the following morning, Santa Fe's red and silver streamliner had carried its musical cargo as far as the scenic southwest. For some of the young travelers, it was their first glimpse of purple hills and the picturesque Indian villages. It was still early when the train pulled into Albuquerque, a settlement founded in 1706 and named in honor of the Duke of Albuquerque, Viceroy of Spain. Located in a rich agricultural, timber, and mineral region, this historic city served as a post for Confederate forces during the Civil War. A beautiful Sunday morning. A morning to give thanks. Leaving the church, the young travelers had lunch and changed into uniform for their afternoon concert at Albuquerque's Zimmerman Field. Over 10,000 people hurried into the stadium to see the California-bound Iowans in action. After a brief informal ceremony where Albuquerque officials welcomed the visitors, the State University of Iowa marching band gave their enthusiastic hosts a preview of the entertainment in store for Rose Bowl spectators. Although their poise might suggest that performing is their profession, these marching musicians are students in all of the university's 10 colleges, four schools, and 67 major departments. Most have other professional goals than music in prospect. Islanders, as they crossed the field, won the undivided attention of many a little girl. In the course of traveling over 80,000 miles, the Highlanders have already appeared in 32 states and toured seven European countries, including Germany, France, Holland, Switzerland, Luxembourg, England, and Scotland.
Albuquerque was impressed. Once more, it was travel time for the busy Iowans who quickly boarded their waiting train. It waited. Next stop, Pasadena. As the miles diminished, excitement mounted. What was awaiting the young travelers in California? Tomorrow would tell the story. Pasadena, complete with people, palm trees, press photographers, and a welcoming committee. And what of the Mississippi ice put on board at Fort Madison? It's a bit melted, but still large enough to present to Pasadena dignitaries as a novel gift. There it is. Already in uniform, bandsmen and Highlanders piled off the train to give an informal performance at the Pasadena station. Congratulations, gentlemen. It's all yours. A festive array of gleaming instruments, sparkling batons, and brilliant plans, the bandsmen and Highlanders presented a colorful sample of their talent. Although the university gives no academic credit for Highlander participation, more than 350 co-eds apply for the 30 or 40 vacancies left by graduating Highlanders. New members work with the group for at least a year before performing. The Iowa students' first problem in Pasadena was a mountain of luggage to be sorted, claimed, and transported to Occidental College which was to be headquarters for the visiting musicians throughout their California stay. Before their Rose Parade and Bowl Game appearances, the two units were slated to perform at the Iowa Picnic, the Ambassador Hotel, the Moulin Rouge Supper Club, and CBS Television City. But there was still time for strolling across Occidental Campus, taking pictures, and comparing travel notes over a good meal. That afternoon found both groups back in their working clothes, high stepping across the Ambassador Hotel lawn. Polished instruments flashed in the sun. But California spectators were prepared. Led by pretty drum major Margaret Ladd, 75 plaid-clad co-eds marched sharply across the ambassador's green turf. No one in the crowd would have guessed that they'd been up since 5.30 that morning. A change of scene. That evening at Hollywood's sophisticated supper club, the Moulin Rouge, where Highlanders demonstrated their singing talent as well as an ability to dance on precariously small surfaces. The audience gave the little girls a great big hand. The Iowa marching men, outfitted in their concert uniforms and under the baton of band director Frederick Ebbs, entertained with some big band sounds. No, madam, these are not the Scottish Highlanders. Showstopper Louis Prima in the spotlight. As so often happens with soft lights and music, someone finally turns them off. And the next day, alas, is a working one. In this case, the next day saw the Highlanders acquiring some exercise, along with their California suntans, as they rehearsed for their appearances in the Tournament of Roses Parade and the Rose Bowl. Every other man envies the man in charge of this all-girl group, director Bill Adamson. Yes, he gave them a break. That same afternoon, band director Frederick Ebbs, 
held a similar workout for his Bermuda-clad music men. Transforming complicated march routines from plotting board to football field is time-consuming as well as strenuous. Helping Ebbs keep track of his high-kicking chorus line was assistant band director Tom Davis. The Iowa cheerleaders sat this one out. That evening was a free one for the hard-working Hawkeyes. They relaxed with a visit to downtown Los Angeles. Television City was the first stop the next morning, where the Iowa musicians appeared on the Art Link Letter House Party. Moving out of the studio to the big CBS parking lot, network cameras caught the action of both groups for television audiences from coast to coast. Everyone had a fine time in the California sunshine, including Linkletter himself, who tried his hand at leading the Iowa band. And interviewed directors Ebbs and Adamson. On to the Iowa Picnic, a yearly event attended by transplanted Iowans from all over Southern California. As well as by the band and Highlanders, who gave a short concert, starting off with director Ebbs and the band. Also conducting the bandsman was music man and ex-Iowan Meredith Wilson who was honored the university and the band by composing several numbers especially for them. Other picnic guests included Herky the Hawk, Iowa's Governor Herschel C. Lovelace, and State University of Iowa President Virgil M. Hancher. Here again are the Scottish Highlanders who charmed the former Iowans with their songs and dances. And then, the big day itself, January 1st, 1959. Knowing that the eyes of the entire nation would be upon them, the Iowa musicians made sure that they would look their very best. More than 10,000 roses adorned the float bearing the 1959 Rose Queen, Pamela Prather, and her court. Turkey the Hawk set the parade pace for the Scottish Highlanders. He combined State University of Iowa groups, the marching band, and the Highlanders for the longest marching unit ever to walk the five and one half mile Rose Parade route. If the happily smiling co are going by too fast to count, they number 75, 37 bagpipers, 32 drummers, five dancers, and a drum major. On the Big Ten Conference float, two University of Iowa students portray Learning, the Greatest Adventure. Led by pretty baton twirlers Anita Ekstrom and Margaret Rossi, the State University of Iowa marching band demonstrated its showmanship to Rose Bowl visitors for the second time in three years and proved to be 135 reasons why everybody loves the parade. Fantasy and Dreams was the title of this Whittier, California entry, depicting the Cinderella story. 
film star Leo Carrillo. This colorful wedding scene was complete with bridesmaids, flower girl, and a ring bearer. The state of Iowa was represented by an eye-catching float saluting Iowa with the slogan, where factory and farm share prosperity. The lovely young lady seated in the middle of the stadium was Miss Iowa of 1958, Joanne Lucille MacDonald of Ames. Arabian Nights was the name of this beautiful grand prize winner. Adventure in Portraits, 17-foot rotating pictures of Presidents Lincoln and Washington. Theme prize went to St. George and his Dragon, complete with fern-covered nostrils, heaving puffs of white smoke. And then, game time. More than 100,000 sports-minded spectators awaiting for the Rose Bowl battle between Iowa's Big Ten champion Hawkeyes and the California Golden Bears. In the pregame show of marching, music, and traditional Scottish dances, the Highlanders turned in a performance that pleasantly diverted the attention of even the most rabid football fans. 